Hello, this is InfoGist TV and welcome to this channel. Now, in this video, we will be talking about Nigerian militant leader, I mean ex-militant leader, Asari Dokobo. We will talk about his education, talk about his family, talk about his wives and his children, talk about his journey into becoming a terror leader, and also talk about now that he's done being that and his take on politics as it is happening today in Nigeria. So let's start by talking about his early life. He was born Melford Dokubo Goodhead Jr in 1964 the first of june by the way and now is typically referred to as asari is now asari dokobo he is a muslim with a populist view and an anti-government stance that have made him a folk hero among certain members of the local population he was at a time the president of the ijo youth council for a time this man was born in Buguma River State. His father was a court judge and his mother was a housewife, full housewife, and he has four other siblings. He received both primary and secondary education in Port Arcot. Then he was subsequently accepted into law school to study law at the University of Calabar, but he dropped out after just three years in school because according to him, he had problems with the school authority and so he dropped out. Afterwards, he tried to continue pursuing his law degree at the River State University of Technology, but that did not happen for him like he ended up dropping out because something similar happened to him i mean the whole issue with um school authority now after this man dropped out of school he converted to islam and subsequently changed his name to mujahid dokubo asari remember that he was born in melford dokubo goodhead jr but is now referred to as Mujahid Dokobo Asari to reflect his change of religion. Now, he spent much of the 1990s attempting to become involved in regional politics. In fact, he ran for two offices in River State in 1992 and 1998, and he did not win any of that. In 1990, he traveled to Libya, where he claimed to have undergone military and political training. In 1992, when he first ran, he ran an unfortunate election campaign for a seat in the River State House of Assembly, which he lost. He also failed to become the chairman of the Asari Toru local government area of River State. By 1998, um, Asari was very active in regional politics and he was actively involved in founding the Ijo Youth Council, which is basically a coalition of Ijo Youth groups to curb violence in the Delta region. He actually became the group's first vice president, the group's first ever vice president. He was a founding member. The organization issued the Kaima Declaration in November of 1998, expressing long-held Ijo concerns about the loss of control of their homeland and their own lives, the Nigerian state and oil companies operating in the region. This declaration and a letter addressed to oil companies called on them to suspend operations and withdraw totally from Ijo territories. They also pledged to struggle peacefully for freedom, self-determination, and ecological justice. And they called it Operation Climate Change, which began in 1998 on the 28th of December, especially. Now, the Nigerian government responded by trying to crack down on this group, the Ijo Youth Council, right? And that was when the old Braha with Niger Delta um, people, militants, actually began. He became the president in 2001 and then led the group to pursue an agenda of resource control and self-determination by every means necessary. Now, following all of those things, in 2003, Asari Dokubo actually went off the surface. Nobody knew whatever about him. That was 2004, rather. He retreated from public view. Then he now went underground to create the Niger Delta People's Volunteer Force, NDPV, which would now emerge as a major catalyst for unrest in the Delta region, the Niger Delta region, right? The NDPVF, which he created, 
is a militant group and it was founded in large part by local and regional politicians who sought great profits from the region's oil revenue then quickly ndpv pvf the niger delta people's volunteer force escalated an armed conflict with another rival group known as the niger delta vigilante ndv who were also seeking to control the delta's oil region niger delta's oil region the combat was constant concentrated primary in worry and subsequently he moved to Port Harcourt as well as areas of the cities um southwest so remember that the asari dokobo is actually from river state yeah now both groups engage in oil bunkering and other illegal forms of local resource extradition now something happened change in political ideals ideals by Atari Do Cooper's group caused the group's former sponsors to withdraw their financial support and started funding NDV. Asari then made a declaration of all out war against the Nigerian state. So they started fighting all of Nigeria. Although he said that he does not um, affiliate, is not in any way affiliated with any particular Biafra independence organization, he has appeared at several events in the past with Rafael Uwazurike, and of course, in several interviews, various interviews, he has praised Nam Kano of the indigenous people of Biafra. Now, crisis and unrest happened, you know, the threats to attack oil wells and um, pipelines around the Niger Delta war. Then, due to this crisis, the president then, as a thousand and three, thousand and four, thousand and five, President Olusha Gwambasanjo, that was his second term in office as the president of Nigeria, called Asari and the leader of the NDV then, the Niger Delta Vigilante, Ateke At- 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 Tom, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name right, I'll just call him Tom going forward, to Abuja for a peace talk, and it was a failure. Then, Asari now said he was not going to endorse the legitimacy of Olusha Obasanjo government because he felt like Obasanjo was trying to, you know, support publicly the self-determination and also um say that the ijos or the niger delta persons are not fighting for something right uh because we are fighting for independence then asari Dokubo was arrested in 2005 they arrested him and they sent him to jail he was there until 2007 they arrested him on the 20th of September 2005. He was arrested and was charged with treason. He was held behind bars and in chains at the Federal Security Service headquarters in Abuja. And he was arrested also. One of the um, allegations were for supporting the segregation of the Niger Delta region from Nigeria. This man, while his case was being heard in 2007, actually threatened to kill the Federal High Court judge, Peter Olayi Waladen, during one of his court hearings. Then in 2007, Obasanjo had left office, June 14 to be precise. It was Yadua that was president now. And due to Asari Dokubo's deteriorating health, um, he had hypertension, diabetes. The former president, Umaru Musa Yadua, actually, as part of his pledge to bring peace to the Niger Delta region, freed as asari dokubo and he kept receiving he still receives i think an annual cash payment of 10 million us dollars from the nigerian government as part of the move to protect the river state's pipelines and creeks from attack and since then you know asari dokubo has been relevant still i mean especially when it comes to regional politics niger delta like i said he's been seen a lot of times with um now declared terrorist um or the person that is agitating for Biafra um, country now, Namdi Kano, and he's had several opinions and said several things concerning Nigerian politics. This man recently mentioned that while he was away, um, now presidential candidate for the All Progressive Congress, um, Bala Ahmed Tenubu Hashiwaju, he said that this man, um, you know, sent his wife some money and ensured and basically paid for the upkeep of his family members while he was away. Now, talking about family members, let's talk about his wives and his kids. This man is married, he's married to Boma Dokubo, and they have four children Amira, Hazan, Hussein, and Osama. Before then, 
um, Asari Dokubo was married. He was married to Alaja Zainab Asari Dokubo. But unfortunately, this woman died in 2016 in a motor accident on her way to Ibadan. As um, on her way to Ibadan, she was she was resident actually in Ibadan then. However, she had to relocate to Janogwa, the capital of Bayelsa, when she was appointed the secretary of the Muslims program broad board. So she was returning to Ibadan when she unfortunately lost her life in a road accident on the 27th of July, 2016. Anyways, guys, that's it concerning this man, Asari Dokubo, his journey um, throughout history. You know, you might have heard of the name Niger Delta Militant. Now you know what he was agitating for and what he was fighting for. Also, is the face or the voice behind some of the memes trending, you know, video clips trending on the internet now one of the sit down interviews when he was talking about the state of the nation it's like a trending voice now for you know a lot of these memes and video clips around the internet thank you guys for watching this video please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also share this video with everyone around you let them know some more things concerning asari dokubo also you can always come here for information and just concerning you know a lot of these very influential persons in the in making nigeria the state that it is right now you know people that are quite influential and are responsible for bringing us to where we are currently as a nation share this video with everyone um if you enjoyed this particular video please do well to give it a thumbs up to show that you enjoy it if you've subscribed please there's a bell icon you would see it's click on that bell icon it's the notification bell to let you know when we have new videos if you're yet to subscribe just subscribe and once you do that you will see the bell button click on it it will notify you when we have new videos for your viewing pleasure i will definitely see you in the next video bye guys